I picked up a couple of old wooden planes, both from the Ohio Tool Company, one of them a uh, Scioto Works. I think I pronounced that correctly, I'll explain that later, and one of them uh, labeled with Auburn Tools, which was something that merged with Ohio Tools back in the day. Ohio's Tools started business in 1823 and ended in 1920. When they joined Auburn Tool, it was in 1893, but this Scioto Works is what they called a second grade or a second class plane. It was their lower quality plane, uh, this Scioto plane that I'm going to work on. I'm going to start here with the blade. I have a Tormac uh, sharpener and one thing that it is good for is uh, giving you a 90 degree grind. It's got this great little brace that holds the blade 90 degrees with the wheel and the, the wheel is uh, going through water so it stays cool and it allowed me to take this plane that was pretty beat up and to grind a 90 degree bevel in it. Uh, as I do with most things when I'm grinding them, I, I'll mark them with a sharpie so that I can see whether I'm getting the angle right. And So I just ran this back and forth on this for a while until I got a nice 90 degree even bevel on this. As for the grit of this wheel on the Tormek, I honestly don't know what it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, I can say this, it's rougher than my Diamond Stone, which is where I went to after running it through the Tormek. I went over to my Diamond Stone with it, which I think is somewhere near 600 grit, 600 maybe plus grit. Again, the same thing. I put it in my uh, little guide and kept adjusting the guide until I got the bevel to where I was giving it a even grind along the bevel at the grit of my diamond stone. Then I turned it over and also ran it against the flat side of the blade in order to get rid of any uh, burr that might have been on there. I started with the rough side of my diamond stone, switched over to the finer side of the diamond stone, then went to a piece of leather with some I would say ultra fine um, rouge on it and polished this blade and got it uh, really, really sharp. Uh, like any plane, I've said it a million times, uh, sharpness matters. And with these old wooden planes, they weigh a ton. If you have a sharp blade, uh, they work really great. So that, that's the blade, just getting that kind of out of the way. Also just did a, just a little, a, a little fine touch to that chip breaker. Then I went to the body of the plane. The body of the plane is pretty sad. It was, uh, it was stained. I tried running a uh, super fine plane over it just to take the top layer off, trying to get at least a smooth finish on it. Uh, it's a solid beach, and beach can look so good, but no matter how far I went with this, the stains kind of remained, so I didn't go that far on that side of the plane. Uh, the other side of the plane was in a little bit better shape, and so as I flip it over here and plane that side, uh, I got a much nicer looking, uh, oh, that look you like, that beach look, and uh, you'll see here in a minute that this, uh, this came off very cleanly. I just gave it a little bit of a touch-up. I just took a zillionth of an inch off of it with the planes and then ran some fine sandpaper over it. I just wanted it to really maintain its patina, yet uh, feel a little nicer in your hand and not be so beat up. These, these two planes were pretty beat up, so I just thought a light planing on each side would just bring them down to a nice smooth uh, look and feel. Uh, then I oiled them up and waxed them, and that was really just about all I did to the bodies of these planes. The bottom had been sanded or flattened by perhaps the previous owner, but when I checked it against the straight edge, uh, it was good and straight, so I didn't have to do anything to the bottom of it. As for these sides, I just put a little bit of oil on them after trying to clean them up with alcohol. Honestly, it's not a great looking plane, but at least they're smooth feeling to your hand, and after a little bit of oil and a paste wax, at least they, they feel good, even though they don't look all that great. 
doesn't really matter to me that much. The price was right on these. I got them for just dirt, dirt, dirt cheap. So after doing that, I, uh, I went to the top of the plane and I needed to replace both the handle on this, which was broken, and the strike button. You can see the strike button is worn down to just about zero. Uh, I measured it. It ended up being about seven-eighths in diameter, so I took a three-quarter inch diameter Forstner bit, drilled out the center of it, because I find that these things aren't glued in, they're just friction fit, and so once I drilled out the center of it, I took a small chisel and was able to pull the pieces out and get it opened uh, cleanly to accept a new button that would be seven-eighths of an inch in diameter. You can see these pieces just came right out once I had drilled the center out of it to kind of weaken the sides. So once that was clear, I had a seven-eighths inch diameter hole that was open in order for me to turn a new button and to pound it into the hole at seven-eighths of an inch. Here's a seven-eighths inch bit just to kind of check that diameter. And one last thing I did while the top of the plane was still level with nothing sticking out of it, I just did some final sanding just to get the top to look at least as equally as good as the sides. Again, not perfect because this plane I think has been through a lot as far as things to stain it, but uh, at least I was able to get it flat and kind of uniformly colored so that when I oiled it and waxed it, it had a, a similar patina to the sides of the plane. So I just ran some sandpaper uh, with a straight edge over the top just to kind of level it out. I did some last minute sanding on the sides with some fine paper, again, just to kind of ease those edges. And uh, I was ready to turn that button. So I had a piece of ebony. Uh, I think it was a pen stock or something like that, but it was about a one inch square. Because it was square, I could fit it into my jig or my uh, uh, jaw on my lathe. And so I just cut a little piece off, stuck it in the lathe uh, on a four sided lathe. Uh, because it was a four sided piece, I cut it, I uh, turned it down to seven eighths of an inch in diameter. I rounded the top to give it that nice strike button kind of a look and just kept checking my diameter. You can see ebony is so nice because just sanding it alone with fine paper almost polishes it. And it got to uh, get to down to the shape and size pretty easily. I cut that off uh, with my Japanese saw to give a nice level bottom. The whole idea of the strike pin is to, you know, apply some a blow to the front of the plane in order to loosen the blade. And then I just uh, tipped it in there and uh, protected it with a piece of wood because I was going to hit it pretty hard. I just held a piece of wood over the top of it and struck it a few times with a mallet. And it went down in there nice and square, nice and uh, flat, sticking up, I think, just the right amount to have sort of a vintage look. Not the way the plane came, but I always think they look good to have a, an off-colored uh, strike button. So here's the wedge. Uh, the wedge really didn't need much of anything. I uh, applied a little bit of oil to it after I had done some cleaning of it with uh, uh, denatured alcohol. Here's uh, linseed oil and steel wool and I'm just kind of cleaning up the wedge to get it ready for when the plane is finally assembled. It cleaned up actually pretty well considering its age. When you think about the dates of these planes, this plane is at minimum over a hundred years old, at, at bare minimum. That Scioto works, by the way, uh, it got that name because of, I, I've heard at least, because it's the, called the Scioto River, which is next door to the plant uh, there in Ohio. And uh, that's the, the name they applied to their, uh, their uh, lower grade planes, wooden planes. They all use beech. They just use maybe a not quite as straight grained or as nice a piece of beech in the body of the plane. 
So here, after I'd finished this up, that part of the plane was going to be ready for reassembly. I had to move on now to the tote. I had a bunch of totes that I'd made in the past. I like the shape. They're probably not totally authentic to this plane, but I traced the shape onto a piece of five-quarter beach, which was the right wood to use. I used a drill to cut some of those radiuses, uh, cut most of this out roughly with a, uh, a bow saw to get it close to the shape. There it is, close to the shape with the other handle on top of it. There you can see the cutout. Uh, then I made a quarter inch MDF template that I could use a bearing guided bit on and I cut to the template. I rounded it with a half inch round over bit and, uh, and a plunge router and once I was done I came out I think with a, a fairly decent looking handle. So really the last thing I had to do was uh, just oil it a little bit to try to give it a, a nicer color, a nicer patina. Again, I wanted it to have a good feel in your hand. So between an oil coat and I used a Watco oil, not sure it was the, the, the best choice, but it had no color in it. I wanted to try to maintain that uh, the nice color of the beach. So I put a coat of Watco on it. I think it did kind of add to the richness of the wood. I followed that up after a couple of days with paste wax to give it a smooth feel in your hand. Also wax the bottom of the plane so that it glides nicely over the wood that you're planing with it. And once I had oiled it, again you can see the, the stains in this wood. There just was no way to get the, the stains out of this wood. But once I'd oiled it up, I was fairly happy with the way the body looked. And all I had to do then was apply the handle into the, the cutout. Cutout is interesting on this handle in that it's, uh, it's back cut in the back so that you, if you sort of tip the handle in from the back forward and press it down, again it's a super tight fit, the forward pressure on the plane with your hand keep, keeps the handle in the slot and you don't need a screw. It fits in there uh, really well. Just pressure fit, you could say. Kind of similar to that strike button. You can see I just kind of tip it in and, and push it down. And uh, after a little cleanup, I think it looks uh, pretty nice. Again, now that I had sharpened it, here I am just testing it out as a plane. And you can see, it's taking off very fine, very thin shavings for a few dollars and kind of a chunk of old wood that's over a hundred years old. I am very impressed with how well this jack plane works. This is a Scioto Works 15, it's called. It's 15 inches long. I think a jack plane is probably what they called it in the day. Look at those shavings, they're just perfect. Uh, coming off of there really nice. Again, sharpness obviously matters. And the heft of the plane obviously matters. So I just have some parting pictures here of it next to the joiner plane that I got at the same time. You can see these laying together here. Uh, turned into each other. The joiner plane's body was in much better shape. There it is from the top with the hammers used for adjusting it. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe and thank you for watching.